Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. Thank you so much for all of your patience. Finally, in this video, we can sit down and talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic again for the five millionth time. But that doesn't matter because we'll do it five million and one times very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we're taking a look at the Nintendo Switch port for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This comes from developer Aspire Media, who is working on the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake, so it's very important to pay attention to their quality of work as it stands right now. Unfortunately, it looks like this port is only going to be on Nintendo Switch, because when you look at Limited Runs, who's doing the Master Edition, which by the way, pre-orders are open right now, please go check it out if you're like me and you're a KOTOR freak, because I ordered like five of these, man. I am so excited for them. A Vibro Blade letter opener, a Pazak card set. Are you kidding me? It's beautiful. But as you can see, it's only for Nintendo Switch. And I feel like they wouldn't have committed to this if they were going to bring it to PlayStation eventually. Anyways, I had enough to say about this new version of Star Wars Knights of the Republic after talking about it on Back Compat, PC, the remake, potential remasters. And now we have this version beyond, of course, the mobile versions. So does this port stand the test of time literally and figuratively we're going to discuss that in today's video and of course consider this a re-review for those of you who are looking to get into star wars knights of the republic for the first time ever i'm having trouble hearing you so for those who don't know star wars knights of the Old republic is my favorite rpg of all time and this game you can play as a soldier, a scoundrel, a scout. You can pick all of your starting classes, and eventually you'll go on to become a Jedi, choosing between a Guardian, a Sentinel, or a Consular. You can pick one of these three classes, so you effectively have a main class and a subclass. You pick from a variety of portraits, you can customize your skills, your attributes, your feats. It's based off the D&D 3 rule set. So there's a lot of dice rolling encountered throughout this gameplay, albeit it's invisible. So when you're swinging for an attack and the game's automating that, it's doing a dice roll check for you in the background. That may not be the most exciting combat system. For me, it works a little bit, especially if you build a soldier, which this game was 100% built for. I think scout is the most fun way to play, but if you're looking to just make sure your attacks land, go pick the soldier, pick either guardian or sentinel, and call it a day. Most of your attacks will land, and this game will be on a combat front, less frustrating and feel not as dated. The story itself continues to just be phenomenal i think one of these days i need to just sit down and do a long-winded analysis slash breakdown of why kotor is so special because it's split up into multiple planets that you're gonna go and explore from terrace to dantooine to korriban and so many more others to see and each of them has their own story arc that you can experience but there's also the underlying main thread of the story that's coursing through all these planets and the way it's all interwoven works so beautifully. And that's not even accounting for, of course, the character interactions you can have amongst your nine other party members from Karth to Bastila to Joe Lee, HK47. There's so many absolute legends in this party. It's easily, and of course I'm biased, my favorite RPG party to date. I just love everyone's backstories, their interactions. Like even you have T3M4, he's this cute little droid great to have around he's got a personality of his own kind of like r2d2 except it's the old republic so that's a general synopsis of the gameplay and the story it's fantastic you really should play it there's a reason why people call this the best star wars game of all time and it's well and truly because it delivers some really compelling characters and a story that in a lot of ways has never been told ever since so with that Let's talk about the Nintendo Switch version. What does it offer here that for freaks like me should compel you? First of all, this is the best looking console version of KOTOR we have. It does look good over on, say, the Xbox with Back Compat, but you only get it in 4x3 ratio. When you dock it on the Nintendo Switch, I was shocked. There was no black borders or anything. This screen got filled up. They updated the HUD so it's a much sharper resolution. Unfortunately, the trade-off there is some of the assets, like the little images to represent items, looks really stretched and pixelated, so that can stand out a little bit. But otherwise, character models look a lot sharper. This game looks 
pretty good maintaining that original art style that it's known for and i think this is so relieving to see because again i always suggest the idea that if aspire does screw up the remake i want the original preserved in the proper manner and so having this port is really important for that reason and having it look so good is also very important now unfortunately what this also means is there's some issues that come with this one of them is i believe this might be the port of a mobile version upscale why is that number one the hud for this game when you enter combat is unnecessarily big whether you have this docked or you have it in handheld it is huge now i know one of the big issues for switch especially early on was the font was too small and it wasn't scaling well for accessibility for a lot of games so maybe we had aspire here overcompensating but i'm talking it takes up a quarter of your screen when combat begins it's really intrusive and it does not look good it can be very in your face the other thing that freaks like me will realize but i think it is important to note here and it's not a nitpick our audio cues across the board are gone so the snorts of a gamorian to the growls of a rat ghoul to your character mumbling to himself or herself when they're fumbling with a lock to do a security check to opening a chest and saying i got it little things like that battle cries gone death sounds gone like all audio cues are pretty much gone so you don't even hear karth go like down you go iconic lines like that gone at least iconic to me and many others and i found that extremely disappointing i don't know why it's missing but it stands out so much and it did aggravate me as i played through this for the millionth time it just i don't know why it's not there it doesn't make any sense one other thing you need to be aware of when playing this version is if you get involved in any we'll say on-screen effects like fog smoke the frame dips pretty low back to it you know it feels like a real switch game at that point in time it's only during those moments otherwise it runs crisp and clean at a higher than 30 fps frame rate which was really surprising also to see it's a well put together port in a lot of ways but it's also missing a lot of little things there that irk me so on a tech front pretty sound this also isn't accounting for one final factor that comes with the nintendo switch version that we'd be remiss not to mention portability Portability is so important with these games nowadays, especially games like Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which was revolutionary for its time when it came out in 2003. This was a definitive original Xbox RPG. And of course, modding's taken it so far, but nothing is quite like taking that originally groundbreaking experience on the go and realizing like, oh, this is such an old game, like it should be running on this hardware, but there's this cool novelty of taking it where you want. And so currently with, say, xCloud not having Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic as a game that you can play there, playing KOTOR on the go is a real perk that is offered specifically on Nintendo Switch. For me, I thought that that was a compelling reason alone to buy it. Playing KOTOR in bed is a spiritual experience. Now keep in mind though, that if you are buying this on your Switch, because they seemingly updated a lot of the textures, you need to be aware that the file size for this game is weirdly large like 10 gigabytes plus large nearing 15 and i was very surprised by this because i remember when we were covering kotor on switch prior to its launch i was saying wow look at the file size i think that's a typo like that's how much bigger of a size it actually was turns out it wasn't a typo so know that you're gonna have to have some memory space clear or you're gonna have to wait for of course the version from limited run games that will have to come in the mail many months later and then once you get that then you could just pop the cartridge in and not even worry about it but for now with it being download only you do need to keep in mind you will need some real space for that and if you have the oled switch that should be no problem whatsoever because it already comes with 64 gigabytes built in which i also want to mention when i was playing in handheld i was using the oled switch and the colors do pop more the blue menus uh, the characters the explosions all of these little things just look a little bit more saturated now and that's just the power of a great oled screen like we saw on the ps vita now we're seeing it here on the switch and man speaking of the vita i wish that console was still around because having this on the vita would have been incredible a meeting of two of my favorite things ever oh man 
But overall, KOTOR from top to bottom, of course, is still fantastic. This is a port that you can spend your money on confidently, but do know that if you're a KOTOR freak like me and replay it most years, that this comes with a couple of drawbacks on a technical front and of course a sound front. Otherwise, it runs well and it's the best looking console version to date, which I think that latter point ranks above anything else I had to say negatively about it because this is the way if you do not have a PC that you can play this game. Even if you do have it on PC, you have to mod it to get it to look like what we're seeing here for KOTOR. It's widescreen outside of a couple cutscenes and that is really, really nice to see. So they did a great job with this port and that confidence in Aspire continues to go up as they respect and enhance Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So ladies and gentlemen, have you been playing the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic port over on Nintendo Switch? Are you playing it for the first time or are you picking it up for the first time? Please let me know in the comments down below. As a absolute maniac, I would love to hear it. So that's all you got from me. And now I pass it to you. What are you thinking? Fire away. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.